I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about some of the domains within biology to which evolutionary theory can be applied. Evolution is a powerful theory with a broad range of applications to biological systems. However, for some reason, the application of evolutionary theory to many of these domains is widely unappreciated. So this video contains a brief primer to help interested parties get up to speed with some of the basic applications of the theory. Evolutionary theory applies most directly to systems which involve copying. Essentially, that means biology, since biology is the science of life, and life is that which persists via copying. Biological evolution is the domain of evolutionary theory which people tend to be most familiar with. It typically deals with the evolution of plants, animals, fungi and microorganisms over millions of years. It's an umbrella category which includes all of the other processes which we'll discuss here. However, within biology there are many sub-processes which have their own evolutionary dynamics, and those are what we'll be considering today. The approach taken in this video may be reminiscent to some readers of the material in Gary Seco's book Without Miracles, Universal Selection Theory and the Second Darwinian Revolution, which is a good book. Seven of the main areas within biology which can usefully be modelled by evolutionary theory are immunology, ontogeny, neurobiology, psychology, mimetics and cybernetics. And we'll briefly cover each of these in turn, starting with the simplest area to understand, which is immunological evolution. So in order to deal with rapidly evolving parasites, vertebrates employ an adaptive immune system, which works using the principles of evolutionary theory. It uses a process known as somatic hypermutation to generate adaptive variants. It then employs genetic recombination to allow a small number of genes to generate a large number of different antigen receptors, which are expressed on the surface of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are then tested and successful ones are bred from. Lymphocytes can also produce memory cells that mediate long-term immunity. The result of this is a miniature evolutionary process within the organism that helps it to adapt in response to rapidly changing parasites. To most people, this sort of mutation is similar to the type that they're familiar with, except that mutations are performed deliberately, and since there are mechanisms for actively making them, they are rather more likely to be somewhat biased towards being adaptive. Next, onto genetic evolution. In multicellular creatures, development is an adaptive evolutionary process. Tree roots grow around rocks, their trunks grow around obstacles, and their branches seek out holes in the canopy. If you have pulled plants out of pots, you will see that there's often an adaptive fit between the roots and their containers. However, the evolutionary dynamics underlying this kind of adaptation during development often remain unappreciated. It's obvious that development involves copying on a cellular level. However, evolution requires variation, and since all the cells involved are clones of each other, what is not always clear is where the variation comes in. However, if you look at the cell phenotypes involved, it is obvious that some kind of variation is coming from somewhere, since liver cells look totally different from muscle spindle cells, which in turn look dif different from neurons. The variation arises not in the DNA of the cells involved, but rather from their environment, and it pers persists via a form of environmental inheritance. This inheritance includes location, chemical concentrations, cell neighbours and other local features. To give an example of how such processes work, consider the evolution of plant, plant root tips. Plant roots have identifiable tips. Their tips divide, which represents a form of reproduction for them. The offspring tips inherit their physical location from their parent, and this location varies from tip to tip. Location represents the main form of evolving heritable information in the system. The plant allocates more resources to root tips in locations with moisture and yielding soil and withdraws resources from those tips in locations that are too dry or too rocky. Those resources are then used to fuel root tip reproduction, resulting in differential reproductive success of root tips and root tip evolution. This eventually generates an adaptive fit to the environment in which the roots find themselves. Next, neurobiological evolution. Brains exhibit several interesting forms of evolution as they are used. Copying processes are ubiquitous in the brain. Since axons branch liberally, any signal sent down them is copied many times, and there's also vari variation and differential reproductive success of these signals. And the result is neural spike train evolution. 
Also, both exons and dendrites have a dynamic branching tree-like structure. The same argument that I just gave explaining why plant roots evolved also applies to growing neurite tips. Neurons and glial cells also reproduce and undergo selection, as is documented in a book called Neural Darwinism. And there are other forms of low-level competition in the mind as well. Exon tips compete for attachment points, synapses compete for neurotransmitters, and so on. At a higher level, we have psychological evolution. At the next level up in the mind, a virtual world is implemented, containing thoughts, ideas and memories. In this virtual world, more copying, variation and differential reproductive success takes place. Copying takes place when memories are recalled, since this adds a memory of recalling the original memory. Copying takes place when actions are repeated or when they are rehearsed, and ideas and action plans are also copied. Lastly, the mind contains a model of the world which is used to make predictions about future consequences of actions. The elements that make up this model also evolve. Psychological evolution can feature directed mutations and intelligent design. The psychologist B.F. Skinner was among those who appreciated how the evolutionary side of mental development worked. He wedded his theory of learning to Darwin's theory of evolution and talked about the extinction of learned behaviours. And then next, we have mimetic evolution. Memes also evolve over time in social spaces, resulting in social and cultural evolution. Like psychological evolution, mimetic evolution features directed mutations and intelligent design. I discuss mimetic evolution in a lot more depth in my book on mimetics, which is now available. Mimetic evolution has snowballed, producing accumulation, accumulating innovation and technological progress, which in turn is leading towards cybernetic evolution. Machines evolve too. Today, machines mostly co-evolve relatively slowly with humans, but the evolution of computer viruses, genetic algorithms and mimetic algorithms gives us a taste of what future cybernetic evolution is likely to hold once humans get eliminated from the innovation loop. These then are seven different domains within biology to which evolutionary theory applies. Together, they illustrate some of the breadth of the systems to which evolutionary theory can usefully be applied. Enjoy!